Is it better to cook your brisket whole or separate the point and flat and cook them separately? We're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. Welcome to the Smoke Lab. My name is Steve Gao, and on this show, I do crazy barbecue experiments you would never do at home, so you can learn from my trial and error. Let's talk about separating the point and the flat. Some people say that separating the point and the flat is the way to go because it's easier to get each individual piece of the brisket to the perfect tenderness without overcooking one or the other, and also because they're smaller chunks, they cook a lot faster. But on the opposite side of the argument, people say, no, you gotta cook briskets whole because there's less surface area exposed exposed to evaporation and drying out. And as a result, you'll get a juicier brisket if you cook it whole. So to find out who's right, I'm starting with two choice grade briskets. I'm removing it from the cryovac bag. I'm making a slice down one side and then I'm making a slice down the other side. Now I'm carefully slicing the point from the flat and following the seam fat all the way down the point to the flat until both muscles are separated. Then I'm trimming what remains of the fat cap on the flat down to around a quarter inch. Then I'm cleaning up the point, I'm trimming off some of the fat on the point, and now we have our separated point and flat. Moving on to the whole brisket, I'm slicing down one side, then I'm slicing down the other side, then I'm trimming the top of the fat cap down to a quarter inch thickness, and flipping it over, I'm taking a look and I don't feel I need to do anything to the bottom, I'm just leaving it as is. This is our whole brisket for this experiment. Now, moving on to seasoning the briskets. I'm slathering the briskets with some soy sauce. This is Dado Pudi Toyamansi. It's currently my favorite because because it has a bit of tang from the added calamansi juice, which is kind of like lemon in flavor. Then some kosher salt, and then some Smoke Trails BBQ brisket rub. After a nice coating of that, I'm adding some Oklahoma Joe's Nashville hot rub as a finishing layer. And obviously I'll do the tops of each brisket in the exact same way. Now heading outside to the Tahoma Auto Feed Charcoal Smoker, I put some Oklahoma Joe's briquettes in, and then I alternated wood chunks and briquettes until it's full. And I also added some pecan shells from Smoke and pecan, they add a ton of extra smoke flavor. Now to light it up, I'm placing some tumbleweed starters in the ashtray, giving them a light and closing it, and that will light up the charcoal and get things going. Now the briskets are going on the top rack of the Tahoma, and they're going to smoke away at 225 degrees Fahrenheit for the next nine hours. And with the Tahoma, it's set and forget. So all I have to do is set it to 225, and the fan will automatically control the temperature and the rate at which the charcoal burns. And as the charcoal burns, more charcoal is going to drop down from the auto feeding bin. And also I didn't show it here, but I did put some pans underneath the briskets to catch drippings. Nine hours later, the briskets look like this. Really nice looking. The bark looks nice and dark and they're probing around 165 to 170. So I'm going to wrap them now. To wrap the whole brisket, I put a half cup of clarified butter on two sheets of heavy duty aluminum foil. You can also use just regular butter or beef tallow if you want instead of clarified butter. Then I place the brisket on the foil and I wrap it tightly. Then for the separated point and flat, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm putting them in pans, which just makes it easier to handle. And it's one of the benefits of working with smaller pieces. Now the briskets are going to continue to smoke at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for another two to three hours. And once they hit around 205 degrees Fahrenheit and they're probing tender, then I removed them from the smoker. I rested them for two hours and I got ready to slice into them. So I just weighed both of these briskets and the moisture loss comes in at 37% for the full brisket. The full brisket lost 37% of its total weight. The point of the second brisket lost 41% of its total weight, which is a lot more than the whole brisket lost. And then we have the flat, which lost 39% of its total weight. So again, more than the whole brisket lost, which isn't looking too good for separating the point and the flat so far. But let's cut into these and find out. First, I'm going to cut into the whole brisket. I usually cut right down the middle, right around here. And I'll give you guys a look. Nice and juicy. It's looking really good. So far, so good. I'll take a slice of the flat now. That's a nice piece of flat. Tear it apart. It tears apart easily. Let's give it a taste. That's a really nice flat slice. It's not too fall apart. It's also not too tough. Retained a lot of moisture. Very juicy. Love it. So we'll get a piece of the point now and I'm just gonna slice this big chunker of fat off. That can get thrown out. And then I'll start making point slices. This will be for burnt ends. And we'll take a look at this one here. So, looks like it got a little bit dry around the edges of the point, but on the interior of the point, it looks really nice. Let's give it a taste. 
Mm. Beautiful, just juicy, fully rendered interconnective tissue. Lots of collagen rendering into gelatin within the interior of the point. The fat cap was fully rendered all the way down. We got some nice caramel colored fat cap here that's been rendered all the way down. It's nice and crunchy, it's bacony. Really good point. So this brisket is almost perfect. So I'm interested to see what the point in the flat tastes like now in comparison. Okay, moving on to the flat. It does seem a little bit stiffer than the whole brisket. Like it's got the edges, some of them are rock hard. This edge right here, I don't know if I'm gonna be even able to eat that. So let's take the very tip off right here. And I'll show you guys this. This is like beef jerky. Can't even eat it. So the very edge of the flat got really burnt up, didn't retain a lot of moisture. So I would just probably throw a good chunk of this away. And this thinner part actually of the flat isn't even edible, it got too dry. So I'm gonna throw that out. And maybe I'll just take some slices from the very middle here, just to be fair, get some primo slices. It's still pretty tough though. We'll pull it apart. I mean, it pulls apart easily, but, but the brisket looks more dry on the interior. It's a passable brisket, but, oh, it's getting stuck in my throat. It's just drier and the edges got more burnt up. So I liked the whole brisket flat a lot better than this one, <laughs> a lot better. Okay, moving on to the point. I'll just reserve that for burnt ends. And it looks quite nice actually, it's pretty juicy. Pull it apart. It's got a little bit of tug to it. I think the whole brisket got a little bit more done. It's still nice and juicy though, but it's not as juicy as the whole brisket. We'll go in a little bit further here. Still good, I think it could have used a little bit more time, but unfortunately, if you look here at the very ends, this again suffered from the same problem as the flat. It's like beef jerky. and it's almost too burnt up to be edible. So conclusions based on this experiment, and it's important to say based on this particular experiment with the cooker I used and the cooking method, if I used a different cooker or a different method, maybe it would have turned out differently. Maybe if I wrapped the point in the flat earlier so that they didn't get as dried out, they would have been better than the whole brisket. But for this particular experiment, the whole brisket turned out better. It lost less moisture than both the point and the flat. It got less crispy around the edges with the point and the flat that were separated. They got a lot more crispy around the edges and in some areas, I had to slice them off and throw them away because they were like beef jerky. So, so based on this experiment, I would say cook your briskets whole. They lose less moisture. There's less surface area that is exposed to evaporation throughout the cook. There's less crispy edges that you might have to discard. And in general, it just turns out better when you cook your brisket whole in my previous experience and backed up by this experiment. If you guys have any other ideas you want to see on the Smoke Lab for experiments, let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, happy smoking.